MARSOC is the Marine Corps component of U.S. Special Operations Command tasked with discreetly executing difficult to highly sensitive missions in some of the world's most dangerous places. However, despite their exceptional skills and training, not all missions go according to plan. Their ordeal began on March 4, 2007, in the Nangarhar province of Afghanistan. At approximately 6 a.m., the Marines departed from their base for a mission consisting of three phases that had been approved. They proceeded eastward, passing through Badika and heading towards the Tora Bora Mountains, which were covered in snow and mud. Upon reaching a key border crossing, they briefly met with an Army military police unit stationed nearby. Following this, the Marines resumed their search for insertion points along the base of the mountains, in search of areas where enough snow had melted to allow for future reconnaissance patrols. After failing to find any viable options, the convoy headed back towards Badikot, where the Marines planned to engage with the local elders and obtain more information about the insurgency in the area. When they arrived to the district, the once bustling streets were unnervingly silent and the only visible people were men of fighting age. Then a vehicle appeared out of nowhere and rammed into the second vehicle in the convoy and exploded. The deafening sound of the explosion filled the air as an intense orange fireball illuminated the sky. The force of the blast sent shrapnel raining down on the six vehicles in the convoy. The platoon commander, Fred Galvin, barely had time to realize that they were ambushed. Suddenly, another car hurtled towards the side of the convoy. Three men hung out the windows, shooting at the Marines with AK-47s. Despite being engulfed in flames, one of the Marine turret gunners managed to extinguish the fire on his body armor and immediately returned fire, unleashing a hail of bullets on the approaching car and bringing it to a stop. But the Marines weren't out of danger yet, as they were suddenly met with a new wave of small arms fire from the opposite side of the road. The Marines fought their way out of the complex ambush while still being fired upon from various directions. As they tried to make their escape, a mob had formed on the road, blocking their path with a car and their own bodies. In response, the turret gunner fired a warning shot above their heads, causing the crowd to quickly scatter. This gave the Marines the opportunity to drive around the roadblock and safely return to Jalalabad airfield. They'd survived the ambush with only one Marine suffering shrapnel wounds, but the situation took a turn for the worse. Misinformation had begun to spread before the platoon even made it back to base. Locals alleged the Marsoc team had gone crazy, gunning down innocent civilians. Village elders provided a story that Marines were drunk and that they got out of their vehicles and went on a door-to-door -door rampage. They claimed that there wasn't any vehicle that exploded and that the Marines just made up the ambush and used slingshots and grenades to make it appear that there was an ambush happening just to have a reason to gun down civilians. This dispute would set the stage for everything that befell Fox Company in the days and months to come. Some Afghans alleged the Marines left their vehicles and threatened local journalists who were taking photographs of the carnage, and some accused the Marines of appearing drunk. Colonel John Nicholson, the Army commander in the area, issued an apology to the local population, acknowledging that the actions of the elite Marine Raiders were a blemish on the reputation and the memory of the numerous Americans who have died protecting Afghanistan and the Afghan people. The United States government compensated the survivors of the alleged shooting victims and their families with cash payments. No definitive number of civilian casualties was determined, and trial evidence indicated that no bodies were ever found. Nonetheless, the now-defunct Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission reported as many as 19 deaths and 50 injuries. Major General Frank Kearney, who was the head of the U.S. Special Operations Command Central, informed the Washington Post that the Marines had killed at least 15 individuals and wounded 50. Kearney also stated that there was no indication that the platoon had been fired upon after the explosion. Shortly after the incident, Marsoc Fox Company was given orders to leave the war zone, with a cloud of shame hanging over them. Commander Fred Galvin was also stripped of his command. However, the investigations into the events that transpired in Badikot were only just the beginning. In January 2008, 10 months after the incident, the Marine Corps held a court of inquiry. The purpose was to investigate and determine whether there was enough credible evidence to press criminal charges. 
The proceedings lasted three weeks and had a significant physical and emotional toll on the seven Marines who were most closely involved. The military placed restrictions on media coverage of the court of inquiry, and a significant portion of the testimony was conducted behind closed doors to prevent the release of classified information. The Marines said they faced tactics of deception, coercion, and even threats of deportation from members of their own military. The consequences of the military's investigation of Fox Company extended beyond the Marines who were implicated. Kearney, a former three-star general who retired from the Army in 2012, regrets his involvement and faced his own investigation by the Defense Department Inspector General. This was prompted by accusations of repeated misconduct made against Kearney by North Carolina Congressman Walter Jones, relating to his handling of the case against Fox Company and another incident involving members of the Army's elite Green Berets. Five months later, on Memorial Day weekend, they released a one-sentence statement which said the Marines acted appropriately. Despite being exonerated, the Marines persistently felt as though they were perceived as guilty of committing war crimes by millions of individuals. Eight years later, major news outlets are still reporting that Fox Company killed innocent civilians. The Marines that are still enlisted say they're passed over for promotions and now approach battle with hesitance. One of the Marines said, I just won't shoot my gun, and if they shoot me, I think it's easier to take a bullet than to actually have to go through all these interrogations. Galvin has spent more than a decade fighting to clear his Marines' names after he says the world painted them as war criminals who killed innocent civilians in their race to escape body cut. Galvin desires complete transparency so that it's absolutely evident that the conflict in Bodycott was a clean shoot, as he refers to it. He wants it to be known that his Marines didn't abandon their vehicles. They maintained control, and as the court of inquiry determined, they were aware of their targets and their use of force was justified. Galvin stated that the belief that the Marsoc team had committed war crimes has been haunting the members of Fox Company for over 10 years. They've never received an official apology, and the only time they were somewhat cleared was following a review by a Navy records board in 2018. The individuals most directly impacted by this case continue to experience lingering concerns regarding potential violent retaliation from adversaries associated with those encountered in body cop. The arduous legal battle has resulted in ongoing health challenges which they attribute to the severe stress endured. Although no members of Fox Company were discharged from the military due to this incident, some have encountered significant professional difficulties. I look like a war criminal, said one of the Marines. Although cleared of wrongdoing, the members of the unit were negatively impacted by the way the incident was perceived. But let us know what you think in the comment section below. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.